One of the most enduring achievements of Indian civilization is undoubtedly its architect Indian architecture, which has evolved through centuries. It's the result of social, economic, and geographical conditions. The different types of Indian architecture style include a mass of expression over space and time, transformed by the forces of history considered unique to India. Indian architecture belonging to different periods of history bears the stamp of the respective periods. Thus, the city of Indus Valley provides substantial evidence of extensive town planning. The beginning of the Indian architecture can be tracked back to the advance of Buddhism in India. It was in, the, in this period that a large number of magnificent buildings came out. Some of the highlights of Buddhism, Buddhist art and architecture are the Great Stupa at Sanchi and the Rock Cut Cave at the Ajanta. With the establishment of the Hindu kingdoms in the South India, the South Indian school of architecture began to flourish. The most notable achievement of the Palawa rulers were the rock cut temples of Mahabalipuram and the temples of Kanchipuram. The Kola, Ha Hoyasala, and the Vijayanaka rulers also did a remarkable job in the field of architecture. The temples at Tanjavu, Belur, and Halabit bear testimony to the architectural excellence to the South Indian rulers. In North India, they developed a new or different style of architecture. It was called the Nagara style architecture. In Central India, the Chandra rulers built a magnificent temple complex at Kanjuraho. With the coming of the Muslim rulers, they developed a new architectural style in India, which is the Indo-Islamic architecture. The Indo-Islamic style was either strictly Islamic nor strictly Hindu. The architecture of the medieval period can be divided into two main categories. They are the Dalhi or the Imperial style and the Mughal architecture. It was followed by a new style of architecture that developed as a result of colonization of India. This style of architecture came to be called as the Indoor Saracenic. Traditional Hindu system of architecture is Vastu Satra and is literally translated to science of architecture. Vastu Satra contains traditional Hindu and Buddhist beliefs. The designs are the combinations of architecture and nature, the relative function of the Satra and the ancient belief, which making use of geometry, pattern, symmetry, and directional elements. The knowledge about architecture and design theory of ancient Indian. Vastu Satra is the textual part of the Vastu Vidya. The principle of ancient Vastu Satra are design of Mandir, which is also known as the Hindu temples and the design as well as the layout of city, both general and in detail. In the 3rd century before Christ, Buddhist architecture was developed in India. The Greek influenced the Indian architecture, especially the rock cut art, to fall under one of the two categories, which is the Mathura school of art and the Gahava school of art. The nature of the rock cut art was also influenced by the divisions of the Buddhism and Hinayana and Mahayana faces. Artifacts used by Buddha were being used to represent Hinayana face, while images of Buddha were being used to represent Mahayana face. The richness of detail was symbolized by the Jhana temples and can be seen in the Divara temples in the in Mount Pabu. Next is the theories of Islamic. Uh, the erstwhile Indian architecture was changed slightly in order to adapt with the events of Islam to allow the traditions of new religions. As a consequence, masjids and mosques been built to form part of the landscape. Arches and domes began to be used. A point of focus such as Gavahidriha was not essential as the core difference lay in the fact that Islam prohibited idol worship. But the Mikra on the western wall of the sanctuary articulating the Kiva offer a national focus. Core means of adornment was surface ornament through the use of geometry, Arab, arabesque, and calligraphy as the idolatry has been prohibited. Most be built with original material later on. There are some crucial parts of Vastu Sastra that being emphasized in promoting sustainable development. The settlement plans which bring resource efficient affordable transport patterns. It supplies primary demands such as water supply, environmental health and waste processing and 
recycling system. Furthermore, it's also wise according to the building and planning codes to support small-scale production process and by promoting the use of local building materials and suitable construction technologies. Besides, it also contributes in sustainability and achieves the development targets by executing pollution control measures and revisions to pricing structures. Low environmental costs with low rise, high density metropolis area are the cardinal rule of Vesu Sutra need to comply with. For instance, in the state of Rajasthan, it is a model of using natural and local resources. In like manner, everything will be reused and recycled in the state of Kerala. The roofs are made of leaves uh, that fall from the palm trees. Although the traditional knowledge has the demonstrate the way to cooperate with the environment, climate and material are as the indispensable bridge to the modern world, modern architects have forgotten and has discarded them. Monasteries and Buddhist rock cut temples were often located near track roads and this space becomes spotovers and temporary accommodations for traders. While many monasteries, tapas and temples has been destroyed, only cat temples are better preserved because of their hidden locations and the fact that they are constructed from stone which is more durable material than clay, metal or wood. The earliest Buddhist monuments in India are attributable to Asoka who asserted his energized and the resources of his empire to the propagations of Buddhism. A monument is a structure which is separately created to commemorate a certain important event or a certain person. Oh, hello there! Let's talk about Kandi the Lumba Bujang. It's in Lumba Bujang, located in Kera, where previously the Sumatran Kingdom of Sri Vijaya overruled. Yang started the fort in the beginning of Indian Kingdom. Styles can be tracked in their early architecture of Sri Vijaya and Majapahit Empire. This influence can be seen during the early Hindu Buddhist civilization in Lumba Bujang. Tanjong Dawai Kera, the most famous building influenced by the Indian civilization, will be in a form of home temples called Kandy at Lumba Bujang. The, the Kandy serves two main functions. It is a holy place to pay respects to the late members of the royal family as well as a place to carry out religious activities. The Kandy faces portrays religious disciplines such as the Kandy which faces the east represents Hinduism, to the north and south represents Buddhism, while the west represents tantric or sakti discipline. Kandy in Lebar Bujang has various forms in different locations. For each structure, they have special characteristics. Alright, so the first form is squarish in shape with an indent curving inward. The second form is the squares which are facing apart from each other. The third form is the squares where Vimana will usually be larger than Mandapa. The fourth form is the squares with Vimana and Mandapa are of equal size. The fifth form is the two sections of faces with each other and are linked by a corridor. The sixth form is the has a smaller Vimana part compared to the Mandapa. The third and the fourth form were influenced mainly by the Hindus. The third form is a square made from lat laterite with seven layers. Divided into the Vimana and Mandapa, the Vimana is bigger than the Mandapa and is separated by a double layer square structure with a hole in the middle. So next I'm going to talk about the Pucha Mosque. It is one of the buildings of Pucha Jaya. The Red Mosque is obviously influenced by the Mughal architecture originated from India. It has a huge dome and several small domes. It looks like a reddish pink rose clay building because it is built with rose tinted granite which gives the desert pink hue to offset the wooden doors, windows and panels. It is a mixture of Malaysian, Persian and Arab Islamic architectural designs with a combination of traditional design motifs using local and foreign craftsmanship. The main entrance is designed similarly to the public building in gate in early Persia. The mosque has a huge reddish pink minaret with symmetrical designs on it. The minbar, which is the pulpit, 
and the marak, which is the meat that denotes the direction of manga, are decorated with cut or calligraphy Islamic design. So the next impact of Indian architecture is Angkor Wat. Angkor Wat is a temple complex in Cambodia as well as the largest religious monument in the world. In fact, it was originally found as Hindu temple for the Khmer Empire. It is strongly related to the Hindu mythology. As similar to Pallava temples, which located in South India, Angkor Wat was built one meter above the ground on the sandstone pitch which consists of three levels of tires. Each of the upper levels are slightly smaller than the lower level which to give the whole structure a pyramid-like. The external wall of the first level of Angkor Wat features magnificent stone murals in bas relief style. The murals are mainly depicting the episode from Ramayana, Mahabharata and turning of the Ocean. The starkness of the exterior of second level of Angkor Wat is offset by decoration of smiling Apsaras or divine dancer in interior part. Divine is one of the Indian classical dance. The architecture of Angkor Wat was influenced by Hindu religion. It can be seen from the position of Angkor Wat. Angkor Wat is the only temple in Cambodia facing west. Typical Khmer temple face east as this is the direction which sun rises. However, it is learned that west is the direction of Lord Vishnu. Therefore, Angkor Wat is the exception that was met by Saravaman. So, the Buddhism entered Myanmar in three inflows. The first one is during the 5th century through northeastern India, and the secondly during the 7th century through religious transformation from Sri Lanka, and finally 10th to 12th century through eastern India. The intense and heavy trade activities between the Eastern India and Southeast Asia and unstable political condition of India encourage Indian artists to find a new area where he can easily perform his art. The Ananda Temple is a Buddhist temple which is a symmetrical masterpiece of Mon architecture and North Indian influence reflecting the transition from the early to the middle period of uh, Bagan architecture. In terms of design and architecture, it is highly inspired by Indian architecture which can be seen clearly in the temples of Bengal and Odisha in India. These temples have been built by Indian architects. Besides, it has been found out and observed that the architecture of this temple matches greatly with the Ananta Cave Temple in Udaygiri Hills in Orissa, India. Both of them portray rock cut architectural style. It is said that everything in Ananda Temple, from Shikara to the basement, as well as the numerous stone sculptures found in the corridors, bear the undoubtable mark of Indian craftsmanship. One of the most noticeable and beautiful features in is the gilded top called Shikara, which is situated on the center of the building. This tower-like structure is originated from the North Indian. It shows Indian influence in the architectural style of Ananda Temple. The, the Ananda Temple houses four standing Buddhas, each one facing the direction of east, north, west, and south. It has been constructed with plaster and bricks, showing iconographic pictures in size and stones, with the main aim of enlightening the people of the area of religious philosophy of Theravada Buddhism. One of the impact of Indian architecture is the invention of bricks. In Hindu city, there were no stone to build houses and buildings. So, most of the buildings in Hindu and Indian civilization are built in burnt bricks, which are in regular size. Bricks are good building materials in handle the possible flood from Hindu river. And this is invented by Indian civilization. Bricks are exceptionally strong and thus it has still survived today. Okay, so the next impact is Indo-Islamic architecture. Muslim architecture in India reflects the unsettled condition of the conquerors. There was a slow fusion between Hindu and Muslim architectural style and this style is called Indo-Islamic. The Islamic monuments of Bengal differentiate themselves by using different building materials and the detail inspired by local tradition. The Bengal roof, which is originate, originated from bamboo construction, adopted by Muslim and the pillars in the Benga are built in bricks and this generally short and square with accurate opening. After doing this project, we have learned about Indian civilization and the contribution of Indian civilization in architecture. 
this makes us more understand about Indian civilization and makes us more appreciate about this culture. Thank you.